Hi, this is Michelle with Silver Enchantments. I hope you enjoy the slideshow. In the beginning, somebody has to carve the original master waxes. I'm not going to go into that, how that is done here, but this is to show you some of the tools that are used. After the master wax has been carved, a mold has to be made of it. One of the tools used is called a vulcanizer. This is just a picture of some of our molds. When someone orders something that we cast, the mold is taken out of the mold rack and each piece is individually squirted or wax injected. This is just a picture of me, look at those hands, injecting wax into a mold. This is number 1519, a very popular pentacle. This is number 1738, a Victorian style, also very popular. And yet another, just to show you, sometimes the wax colors do change. And here's a batch of waxes done today, October 20th, 2011. The rest of these pictures were taken actually over five years ago. After a batch has been squirted, they need to be mounted. That's Tonka in the background. Anyway, each piece is then mounted onto a wax base. Each style receives its own base. This is number 2842, a very popular Triskelion. And here's part number 2195, a shooting star. Generally, a batch of 14 to 21 bases are done before the true investing process, which is the next step, begins. A calculation is made about how much investment it will take to fill up each of these bases. It is then weighed out on special scales and is then put into a mixer. This is just a picture of the investment being mixed. It is quite a messy job. Masks do have to be worn during this process as you don't want the investment to enter your lungs. Investment is a type of plaster of Paris, if you will. After the investment is mixed, it has to be placed into a vacuum to release the air bubbles. Once the air bubbles, we call it the muffin mix, once the investment is done bubbling, it's then taken out of the vacuum and poured into the flask mold. After the investment is poured into the flask, it then has to be vacuumed again. And after that vacuuming, this is what it looks like. Yes, it's quite messy. You'll see on the flask closest to you, those are the ones that have been invested. The others are ready for investment. After it's dried for a bit, Weights are then etched onto the flask so we know how much metal has to be used in order to cast the items. Well, here's a picture of our old kiln. We do have a new one. This one is shot. Anyway, after it is dried overnight, it is fired at a low temperature in order to draw out the remaining water from the flask and then heats them up through a slow process to a temperature that will accept the molten metal. The next morning, Joe, my father, our casting man, checks the tanks. Oxygen and acetylene have to be used in a correct mixture in order to reach temperatures that will molt or melt the metal. Glass are then taken from the kiln Metal is put into the crucible, and Joe fires up the dragon. And here's the dragon at work. 
Sterling silver's melting temperature is 1,640 degrees. As soon as flow is reached, the arm is dropped and the spinning begins. Here's a picture of the crucible as the metal has just reached the flow point. And here's a picture just after the spin. This is why sometimes this process is also called spin casting. Special tongs are used to lift the flask off the support arm and then it needs to be drenched in water. At this point, it's approximately 1500 degrees that Joe's doing it. This is what an item looks like just after quenching. Yes, it's quite messy and will go through several cleaning processes. This is part number 2016, a very popular hidden pentacle style. And this is a batch of the 14 to 21 flasks I was telling you about. This is how they look after they've gone through the first cleaning. We use a high power water pressure to get, to knock off some of that investment. Then each piece has to be individually cut off of the base. The piece or stem that is attached to the base is called a sprue. Thought you might want to know that. After they've all been cut off, You'll see those sprues are still attached to each piece. It then goes through the very first official cleansing process. This is done with a compound, which also includes sand. And here's what it looks like after an overnight tumble. This is to make sure that all of the investment has been taken off of each piece. Again, you still see the sprues attached to each piece. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of this, but each of those pieces are then clipped off of its sprue. So each piece is handled several times during this process. Then the official final cleaning process has happened. And here's an old picture of our tumblers. There are approximately four more cleaning processes that happen. I'm not going to bore you with the details. But several different solutions are used to make everything pretty for you. Well, there's a lot more I could tell you, but this is a book that I do recommend to a lot of people. If you have any interest in casting or the casting process, wax carving, etc., please check out this book. I believe it can still be found on Amazon. Anyway, it's called Centrifugal or Lost Wax Jewelry Casting by Murray Bogan. Well, I hope you enjoy learning a little bit more about how we make the things that we make for you. Thanks, this is Michelle signing off, and we hope to see you at silverenchantment.com. Have a blessed evening.